Hello, this is the weekly review, Making Sense of Relevant Topics and News, the program of Sawa Sawa Network, and I'm Roger Alfred Yoron Mudir, the producer and host. Joining the show today are two famous South Sudanese artists, Silver X and Abul Oyai. Silver X is a singer, a rapper, and a creative performer, and winner of so many awards. He was recognized by the US-based magazine <laughs> Foreign Policy as a global thinker for the year 2014 for composing the song, Let's Stand Together, featuring many artists, uh, the song called upon the South Sudanese leaders to stop conflicts and rebuild uh, South Sudan. Uh, on the other hand, Abul Oyai is a South Sudanese painter and the founder of the ba Baobab uh, Art Foundation and a founding member of Anataban, a collective of creatives in uh, South Sudan who use their art as a platform for youth to demand peace and justice in South Sudan. Abul has held exhibition in the US, UK, South Sudan, Uganda, and Kenya. She contributed also to the book cover of No Time to Mourn, an anthology by 41 South Sudanese women. Uh, and the program today will be looking at the impact of South Sudanese artists, the opportunities that are available for them to bring positive change, and the challenges artists face and how to improve the, envir the environment for them uh, and their work, uh, including issues of copyrights and so on. Welcome to the weekly review, uh, Silver X and Abu Loyal. Thank you. Uh, Abul, are you getting us? Well, uh, Abul, I, I hope you are hearing us. Uh, let me give this introduction to our audience. Uh, the International Covenant on uh, Civil and Political Rights, uh, also uh, in Article uh, 192, sub Article 2, states that everyone shall have the right to freedom of expression this right shall include freedom to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas in all kinds, regardless of frontiers, either orally, in writing, or in print, in the form of art, through other media of his or her choice. In South Sudan, the Constitution also uh, says, that, that is in Article uh, 30, 38, sub Article 1, that all levels of government shall encourage and promote arts and craft and foster their patronization by government and institutions and the citizens. Um, to you, the artist, let's hear from you. How is it like to be an artist in South Sudan? Uh, the impact you've been able to create so far. Uh, tell Rex, you can start with that. How is it to, like to be an artist? <laughs> First of all, I would like to say uh, to all the audience of Sour Sour Network, I'd like to say, uh, and to you, Roger, it's a, you know, it's a pleasure like, you know, to be here with you and uh, share what I have you know, with, with my people all over the world, you know. Um, majorly, it's a good feeling first and foremost to, you know, to be an artist, you know, it's a blessing, it's a gift. Not everyone is blessed to be an artist, a singer or a painter or, you know, a dancer or, you know, I mean, all these things are, but once you're one, that's the blessing one first and foremost, but to be a, uh, an artist in South Sudan, it is not as easy as it is in other countries, you understand? Mm -hmm. Like uh, first and foremost, music cannot move where there is no stability, you understand? Music cannot move where, you know, the people are divided based on so many, you know, factors, you understand? So in that regard, to be an artist here is very hard is actually sacrifice, you understand? First of all, financially, we don't make money, like really enough. Not even, let me say, not, let me not say enough, but we don't make money even close to, close to something that can sustain our living as, you know, as artists. So many artists are not able to provide even mere food on, you know, on their tables. So many artists can't even afford to just buy a small car for their movement. A lot of them until today, others end up going to beg from these offices, you know, from these businessmen and all this kind of stuff. You understand? Unlike other countries where an artist of my caliber, you understand? So many see me as like silver to reach, silver to that and that, compared with other African artists, other artists great in the world. But then when it comes to my country, it's different because right now you can put a concert People are not going to come from, you know, from all the corners of the country like it was in 2000 and, you know, 
uh, 10, 11, 12, uh, up to 13 before the war. But after the war happened, you know, it disorganized everything, literally, you understand? So right now, we're just doing music for the love of doing music. But we're not doing music to get paid, like really paid like other artists do outside there. You understand why? Because we don't have, you know, a very stable political ground, you understand? Like you put a concert here right now, let me say where, like, uh, let me say Nyakurun Cultural Center. That is one of the famous places we used to hold concerts. Like I, I personally filled those places, you know, about four or five times. That was before the war, but right now it's not the case. You cannot, you can hardly do that. Because if I put a concert, people are going to look at the, at the, at the, at the angle of, okay, this is Silver X, it's from the other side of the country, you know, it's from the other tribe. I ah, know we're not going to support, not because the music is bad, but because there is so much hate. You know, that has been inso in, like installed in our hearts as Sassadanese. And we're growing with that, we're embracing that, you know, that's a huge mistake that we have. You can even see like the whole hate is taken up to social media, in real life, on the ground. You know, that's how it is so difficult to do music here in this country. Another thing is like our Sassadanese audience worldwide, you know, so worldwide do not support the home music because of the mere factors, you know, of the major factors, let me say that I've just mentioned, like on the tribal basis, you know, and uh, regional basis, on a uh, political basis, you understand? Like somebody will never take their time to go to YouTube or to go to Spotify or to Tidal or to Amazon to download Silver X music, you understand? But we'd rather go and download another music, you know, of another artist from another country, you get? But, but despite Why? That, because we are not like, we are not that one, you know, we're not that united. That's why it's very, very, very like very hard. Yeah, no. that's in terms of maybe the numbers and all this, but we've seen also your music being consumed uh, even locally. We we'll talk about radio stations or, or the media in the in the country, and also uh, the awards that have been held. You know, we've seen at least you know there are people who who come together despite the differences and uh, issues of tribalism and all this. Yeah, but still, still there is that small number sure. of who who are able to to do that. In terms of consuming uh, what Actually, artists, not. artists produce uh, and uh, being able to earn from it, uh, this is the challenge here because uh, from what I have done, I've researched on um, uh, the issue of copyrights and, and, and ensuring that artists earn from their work, it's really a challenge in the country at the moment. Yeah, sure. Like uh, you know, like of, of, of late, I love the spirit. Like uh, the spirit, like we've embraced as Sudanese, like. Uh, when it comes to our issues home here, we handle them the way we handle them. But when it comes like, you know, going out to represent the flag, you know, of our nation, people, you know, people, people stand together. That I had that experience uh, 2020, when I had a nomination in, uh, in, uh, in high school awards based in East Africa and Uganda, Kampala, where I was nominated like in the category of best East African artist. And uh, with so many other great artists like Diamond Platinum, Harmonize, uh, Eddie Kenzo, Shiba, and so many like Kaligra from Kenya. I saw that, you know, the category was very hard and I was wondering how we could win that. But then when I spoke to my wife, she was like, just share the link. I'm, I believe the Sassanians are going to vote. And believe me, when I shared the link, people voted and we had the highest number of votes and we won that word. You know, that's something that is very amazing about us. And I believe the youth are beginning to understand that we need each other more than anything else. So, oh. and then the issue of the copyright, mm -hmm. that's definitely something that, you know, that has to be put in the constitution because right now as an artist, you cannot even arrest someone for playing your music anyhow. You can't even arrest, you know, you cannot shoot someone to court because there is no law in our constitution that, you know, that, 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 uh, that stands, you know, for the musical copyrights or even arts, like uh, what my sister is doing, you know, the painting and stuff. You understand, you can do that, somebody can just copyright, I mean, take it and you cannot take them to court because there is no law in the, you know, in our constitution. I think that's the problem, but, we hope with time maybe things will change. Well, uh, with regards to the issue of copyrights, is uh, the constitution in uh, Schedule A uh, uh, the, on the issue of the powers of the executive uh, and the legislative, the, 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 what is called the exclusive legislative and executive powers of the national government it says shall include, and that is in paragraph 24, that intellectual property rights. So it's just about uh, the government has not been able to, 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 to enact that uh, legislation to, to, to protect copyright, but. Yeah. I mean, uh, let, me, let me welcome uh, uh, Abul. Abul, uh, tell us also in your view, what, what is it like to be an artist, a painter, and uh, give us also what inspired you to come up with the, the Bob uh, Foundation, the Art Foundation. 
Well, um, just to add on to, to, to my brother Silver Edge, I, I feel art thrives in all forms and in every place. I know with conflict and, and all this that is happening in South Sudan, I think it's also an inspiration to a lot of, you know, a lot of us, like the way we came up with Anna Taban, it's because of the, the situation that we're happening in the country. And, you know, we had to stand up in every form. So uh, um, I, I mean, the situation in our country matches, it might be difficult, but it's also, um, when it, it comes to the Baba Foundation, so I, in 2018, and you know, I lived in Nairobi where the creative scene is amazing. It's growing the art, like you know, the artists are not they're not their struggles are very different from what we're going through here. They have materials available to them, they have the space, uh, a lot of spaces available to them, galleries, museums. So and when I came here, I wanted to bring that home. I wanted to create that space where every artist can come and be inspired to, to you know, to create or have a place, a, a platform where they, their work can be sold. And, and we're going slowly. We, we, you know, we've started, we've started on two years old now. We're doing amazing stuff. I'm curating a lot of artists work. And, and we, we, we're planning for even a bigger space, a gallery that, that, that is starting soon, we're building, you know, so that a lot of, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. so a gallery that we're starting soon. And this, yeah, so this is gonna be, uh, the Baba Foundation is gonna be a creative, all forms of creative, but of course, um, as an artist, I think my main focus will be on art, but so far we have, we, we will have the museum, the gallery, the knowledge center, uh, music, you know, studio, so that everybody is, you know, represented. And the, the 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 plan is to take it away out of it's it's a little bit out of Juba, so it's in Nyang, and just to create that energy and bring you know all these things that we're admiring in other countries, bring it home because we deserve them as well. And not everybody's gonna run to Kenya or go to these places to have you know, the scene, so, yeah. Well, uh, uh, you take us through, like, yeah. what you've been able to, to, to create so far, the impact you've been able to make, to make, because you've seen there are a lot of activities going on, but uh, you can give us uh, that in, 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 in summary. So, uh, uh, there's the, the monthly flea market, there's the wine and canvas, there's what, many things happening, yeah. So, uh, Initially, when we started, it was just exhibitions. I would, uh, it was just my own personal work uh, when I'd come in. So I will do exhibition. The wind and canvas was um, a way to involve everybody. So a lot of people come in, you don't have to be an artist to paint. And, and whether we like, I mean, in a way, a lot of us are artists, actually. We, we might not know about it. So with the wind and canvas, we just took Create that space. People coming over, you paint, get inspired. So we've done that. Uh, we do a monthly, a monthly uh, um, exhibition, small exhibition, solar. I mean, solo exhibition. And you know, and we don't, and not it's not mainly in the at the bar itself, but then we do it like so far. I'm, I'm, I'm curating an exhibition that is going to take place next week, um, next Saturday on the 19th, and it's going to be at the American Embassy residence. Um, we do music shows as well. Like recently, we just brought in artists from Kenya, and these are not just artists. These are uh, they are activists, the Sarabi band. We've done, uh, we brought in Fadili and, you know, from different places. And just usually when we bring in artists, they, we make sure they collaborate with other, with, with South Sudanese artists. Mm -hmm. So, and the last ones we had, uh, Yanaz record with, uh, with Accord and Fadili and the music is going to be out soon. 
and amazing, like, you know, just to, to show. Hello, are you getting us? Oh yeah, uh, Abul. Hello, Abul. Well, uh, Silva, you, you can come in and then uh, we, we will wait for oh, things like that, like things that really affect us every day. Mm -hmm. And um, we on. also, yeah, we also do poetry, um, poetry sessions here that is organized by different youth groups. We do workshops that has been going well. We've done art clinic with non fees I mean, non fees violence. And so with the art clinic, we do trauma healing and using art as therapy. And just to, you know, to give, like, we're going, we've gone through so much, you know, And you find people working on this. The issue of therapy and mental Sorry? health. The issue about therapy yes. around mental health that you've been engaging people on. And uh, even the yeah. art in general, yeah. are the people welcoming them? What do you say? Because also, so you, you also visited some schools uh, recently. Uh, yes, yeah. schools, uh, prisons, and what are the feedback? So, uh, um, feedback? it it's amazing. Uh, I, I mean, there is a workshop I did with the in the prison recently, and it really touched me because you know. If you go to, and speak to a 17 year old child in, in, you know, in the prison and you're asking them, oh, what did you do? They might not open up and speak to you, you know, easily. But with, you know, with art, with art, you know, I'll, I'll usually I give them like just simple question, you know, draw your, give, you know, in the three steps, draw your life yesterday, you know, a few months ago, today, and tomorrow, and with you know, with just those three papers, you'll be amazed the things they you know put on the papers. And then of course later on we sit down and ask people to talk about. And and I realized a lot of them were in the gangs, you know, they've lost, committed lots of murders and things like this. But then through art they were able to speak. Mm -hmm you know, things that they wouldn't have even just said. And then a lot of them, when you're talking, their hopes, it's main, most of the time they're like, when I get out of prison, I want to do this. I want to build my mama house. Mm -hmm. They already have dreams, you know? And, and it, it's, it's a lot of things that, to, to find a child in, 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 in prison, it's, it's all this that is happening. A lot of them, poverty, you know, the families are scattered everywhere. The old system, you know, with the family, the government, you know, like, so you find, mm. you know, without proper schools, then clearly this kid is going to be out and, yeah, and uh, Silva, run the street and all that. Silva, you, you, you started your career uh, quite a long time ago. And uh, we've seen over the years you sang about uh, social issues, uh, injustice, and, and, and so on. Uh, when you were named, for example, in 2014, uh, as uh, among the 100 global thinkers uh, by the U.S. magazine Foreign Policy uh, for that song, uh, Let Us Stand Together, how have things changed since then up to now? Uh, the, the impact you've been able to make through your music and also the fact that uh, that song at that time was very powerful because it was just immediately when the war broke out and uh, you were able to bring together a lot of those artists from different backgrounds to come together. So you, you, you try to, to explain to us the impact that you artists can make through music also to inspire people, to, to give them hope and to, to also uh, make them do good things. You uh, unmute yourself, you are you're on mute. Uh, unmute yourself. We're not hearing you. Okay. So like, uh, yeah, as in uh, first and foremost is a very beautiful feeling, you know, to be to be Silver X, you understand, or to be any other great artist there with great impact uh, to my, you know, to, to, to my people. Yeah, I started music way back in, two seven, uh, in 2007 and then, uh, you know, made ways up. The first time I made the biggest impact in this country was 
when I sang the song of uh, Come Tomorrow, I don't know if you can remember that. That is a, the song that was talking about, you know, looking for jobs and they have oh. to ask you questions like, what's your name? Where are you coming from? You know, what's the tribe? And all those kind of things. But it's You know, that was a mega explosion for Silver X and it went far. And then I met a lot of other things. But the most special one was, uh, was that one for Let's Stand Together. That was after the 2013, you know, war. You know, first of all, when that incident happened, every citizen was touched, whether inside or outside. So I said, and every citizen was touched. And then after it a bit stopped, all of us were thinking of what we can do to get ourselves back together. You understand? So now the difference is politicians did have to, what they had to do, you know, to try to bring people back together. And then we as artists, we also did our part because I believe as a citizen, every citizen in this country has a role to play. Do not undermine any citizen here. So me, my role as an artist, I thought, oh, like, okay, it's always, it's obvious, like, as in like, uh, I have a gun and my gun is a microphone, but it depends on how I use that microphone, you understand? The difference between my gun and the gun for, for the army is that the other one kills and this one, doesn't kill, it can heal a million souls. You understand, it can unite people, it can bring people together. So when I came with that idea and I did sing that song with a couple of artists from different, you know, different areas of the, from the country and then the song worked out, you know, it also connected like with, there was a guy who was, who did uh, a walk from the beginning of the, you know, from the source of the River Nile up to the end that could have taken him about one full year. And every country he went to, he had the privilege to meet the president and the most famous artist. And I happened to be one. So I was the one who was contacted when the guy came and was like, yeah, the most famous artist we have in the country, Silver X. So he had a chance to meet me in the studio when we were shooting the video for Let's Stand Together. So his journalists who are following him, you know, they all came all the way from the UK, I think from the US, and then they covered up the whole event, had interviews with them. And when the song went out, the song had a very huge impact. And I'm sure it changed a lot of souls. And uh, yeah, it helped to bring people together and help to calm those ones who are grieving. And like, yeah, that's how the song got up to that extent because the impact was huge. And uh, I feel that's what I could do as an artist because I was nothing I could have done more than using my voice to sing at and bringing moment, people together. At the moment, what are your current projects? Because I saw you, you launched an album recently, a new album. Uh, what are your current projects and, and what do you think they're going to, how, how do you think they're going to impact the, the people of South Sudan? Yeah, like uh, right now, the, uh, my current projects, I'm working on a, I'm releasing an album that is, the album is titled Walk the Talk. And uh, I've just released one song from it. The song is called Moyena. And I think right now probably is a, it's doing pro like amazing in the country. It's not by mistake, probably is the biggest song right now we have at the moment. But then the whole album is supposed to drop on the 23rd of June. So majorly right now I do music that is, uh, that people want to hear, you understand? Like you said before in the start, I do music that has to touch with social issues. I do music that has to, you know, inspire people. I do music that has to, you know, create love among our souls, you know? So I don't do a hateful music. This is a moment I feel now, South Sudanese deserve to listen to the best music, not like the one who did those days, you understand? Right now people need music that can touch souls, that can heal souls, that can sit back home and listen to it and be like, yeah, this is this and that. So in one or the other, we're trying to create music that can help outcompete the foreign music that is dominating back home here, you understand? And slowly, slowly, I see that change is happening. So majorly, that's a project I'm working on and the album is having about probably 17 songs, and uh, but only one of it has gone out. But yeah, that's what I'm working on and I'm glad I'm back home because people had missed me a lot and people are you know, complaining I'm not around in the country and all that, so but I'm back home so like, well, and also like I'm working on, you know, building new artists from the, Holiday Music Empire. I have Nipsey Kid, I have Navi Gabbana, I have MD Sam that I'm focused on, you know, to shine light on them in so many different other ways, through collaboration, through advice, through guidance, through exposure, you know, yeah. So major, that's where I'm home and I'm doing this for my country. That's what I can do as Silver X. I cannot be able to give everybody money out there, but I can be able to use what I have in my mind to help them, you know, become better citizens. Abul, uh, uh Abul, you, uh, I checked on your website, you have, uh, you have some sections uh, on, about your work, like the Omo series, the Struggle Discontinued, the White Malaya, and also the, the book cover. We read that you, you, your work uh, contributed, or the, the book cover of uh, No Time to Mourn is your work. And um, yeah. No Time to Mourn is you know, the anthology of uh, the 41,000 women. And uh, 
also I've seen your work, your work has also appeared on the BBC. Uh, you are featured on the BBC and stuff like that. Tell us in in in, in uh, you know a kind of uh, uh, summarized manner, but also in detail uh, the impact. How do you feel like your work being featured to that extent, and uh, what those uh, sections of almost series and struggles continue to mean? Yeah, well, I'm 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 humbled, you know. Like, I think sometimes when you do the work for the love of it, then it's um it's it's easy. It's very easy to go to places, and the passion, and you know, and why I'm doing it from the beginning. So um. How do I feel? Happy, grateful, and you know, and I'm glad that I've. It wasn't easy starting, you know, as an artist. Um, but I think what really encouraged me was the, the love that people have shown for it, and and also like the the artists I've, I've lived with, and it's, it's it's been a learning process. It's it's been a journey, and and I'm still moving on. Getting graded though, yeah. Sometimes I'm actually surprised when I see my, you know, like people are calling or when I'm seeing works, you know, somebody's ordering a painting from Germany or from somewhere, and I'm thinking, why, why, why would they want to, you know, buy my art? But then also, it's a good, it's humbling. That's all I can say. Um, I also ask about those. Uh, I asked about those uh, work that you started on, on on your website. Yeah. Struggle discontinued. Almost serious. So, so usually when I do when when I'm painting, you know, and like Silver X was saying earlier, it's I I paint things that I see every day, you know, and and also. Um, you know, social issues, all this thing. When I did this, the struggle discontinued was, um, it, it's, it's because of, you know, what I was seeing on coming to Juba, the things I was seeing, the soldiers. And so it was mainly on the soldiers and, and I was trying to look at the change. You know, when you look at the SPLA, the SPLA back then and the SPLA today, it's, or when you look at a soldier today and the way we looked at soldiers back then, it's, it's very, there's a big change. Today you, you, you fear, some, we, we all fear, I fear some seeing someone in a uniform, you know? But then, and back in the days, these were people that we looked up to, you know, they were, they were our fathers, they were husbands, they were family, you know? And I just wanted to, to see like something somewhere happened, you know, 2013 happened. Uh, and then the trust is is totally gone, and and I'm I'm also trying to to bring out like fine they are they are soldiers, but at the end of the day, you know, if you walk this but you find the soldiers putting all the way to build from now, or he's carrying a young child from you know from those people. I remember there was a day I was on a border and I'm seeing this soldier in a khaki looking really, really like weak, tired, but he was carrying a sick child. And I, I, I couldn't imagine like, so I went and talked to him. I'm like, when were you, how long ago were you in the military? Did you just join? Have you all been there? And he's, he was, he joined the army in the nineties. So imagine for someone who's been fighting all that long, you know, thinking, you know, you're fighting for your independence, what, and then see yourself in that situation 20 years later. So, so anyway, revolu the revolution discontinued was talking about that. Now, when I did the Omo Valley series, so my art, I like to think it's anthropology. So I go, usually I go to the communities, like you've seen me with the Mundaris. And this one, I went to the Kachipo area, you know, spent, 15, day, um, 15 days, the whole journey with the people and we, I lived with them, you know, just doing what they do. And we, so I, we were sketching and then I would give them the, the canvas to, to paint on. So actually a lot of the work from the almost series, the women, the women and the young people there were, were painting with me. 
So I can't take credit for that alone, but I wanted to know the culture, why they do the, the you know, the leaf plate, what were the meaning of the paintings on their faces. And, and also to just capture those moments because right now it's a big, a lot of people go for tour, to, you know, to, tourism there and all that. And it's, and you find sometimes the culture can be shift, you know, what they didn't used to do nowadays, maybe because a photographer wants to be more dramatic and then they will do that. And in the long run, these are the cultures that might die out. And for me, it's to just capture that to, yeah. Well, uh, let's go for a short break, then we'll be right back. Well, uh, dear viewer, welcome back from that short break. Uh, we are uh, continuing with the program, the weekly review. Uh, my name is Roger Alfred Chiron I'm the producer and the host. Today we have uh, Silva X, uh, artist, uh, singer, and also uh, we have Abu Loya, she's a painter. Uh, we, we, let's continue. You see, the, for example, the, the, the means to, to like uh, spread your, your art. You have, for example, the SSBC, the South Sudan Broadcasting Corporation, which is a public broadcaster. Uh, the law says, and that is the South Sudan Broadcasting Corporation Act says that SSBC uh, shall promote and develop, uh, shall, shall promote the development of South Sudanese expression by providing a wide range of programming that refers to South Sudanese opinions, ideas, values, and artistic creativity by displaying local and homegrown talent in radio and television programming. Now you, the artist, how, how is it like for you? Uh, have you like, are you seeing your work being, being uh, displayed and uh, uh, spread through the SSBC? Yes, Silva, you, you can go on and then Abu. Yeah, us. yeah, just like, uh, let me say, well, when it comes to You guys of a of a SSB. yeah. Sorry about the network. I think yeah, SSBC is doing their part, but then the program is not really enough because we only have one day in a week to play South Sudanese music, and that's only one hour. That is every Sunday from uh, from five p.m. to six p.m. So the timing is you know it's only one hour. Imagine how many uh, how many artists are out there in South Sudan. Who have music videos to be played and then in one hour there are going to be adverts and all this how many videos do you think are going to be played in that one hour and it's only once in a week so that's one of the greatest factors we have affecting our music you know the movement and you know the movement of our music is very very much slow because we don't have the you know the 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 the, 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 the platforms you know to get it going so you wait for one week to watch a video on sspv and there are so many artists, so many new videos. So, so many artists don't get chances even like to play on SSTV, you understand? So I think if there was more, you know, more space given, maybe like it could be like on a, maybe twice or thrice in a week, or could be like a daily thing like we see in, you know, you know in other East African televisions where a music program is given every day, one hour every day, or two hours or one hour and a half, you know? That could be enough, you know, to, 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 to capture all the, you know, all the, the music videos and all other forms of art, you know, to get it out to the people, you understand? Because it's the only TV we have. We don't have another TV that, you know, does play our music, but we have another radio stations. We thank God for that. And uh, they are also embracing. Uh, they play a lot of South Sudanese music, which is very, very good. But then the question is like the videos don't get really enough chance to go. And when we put them on YouTube, it's even hard for our people because, I mean, to view them because internet is a problem in the country. You know, for you to click on a link in a YouTube, like to watch a video, that's about three minutes or two minutes and a half. It's hard, you know? So majorly we have those factors affecting our, uh, our music. That's why it's a little bit hard for people outside there to access our music. Well, yeah, but um, we hope with time, maybe things will change, but radio-wise, yeah, they are doing good. And also with the, with the radio, the private stations, uh, the other issue of, you know, the copyright, you know your music played the private the private stations uh the private stations they do play they do play actually they're they're embracing because we also have like only one radio station that's for the government that is ssbc radio uh that's about a uh, hundred 
zero five. That's the frequency. That's the only one. It's also like in the same station where SSTV is, but all others are just like you know these are these are commercial radios. But you know since they are being operated by South Sudanese, they give platform like every day. You know, you know for South Sudanese music, which is a good thing. So, but then when you understand the concept of music of today, audios don't do much, but videos do. Like for example, why is Nigerian music dominating all over Africa and going across the world? Is because one, they have created enough TV platforms, you know, to display their work. You understand? Like you have MTV bass, you have Afro uh, pop, uh, whatever. You have trace music. You have, uh, I mean, a lot of them. You get so people get to watch these things from everywhere, from all over the world. But here we cannot let our work be seen. You understand? So that's the thing. A little, a hard factor, but I know. With time, things will be maybe better. But the local radio, the, the stations there, they, they don't pay you for playing your music. They, what they pay? No, you? they don't pay. They, they don't pay because there was a time, you know, if you're going to uh, enforce them to pay the artists for playing our work without copyright, it's not going to work. And some artists tried way back in 2012, but it actually gave them advantage to actually stop playing Sassanese music. Because if you're going to tell them to pay for playing Silver X music, and then they would rather go play Chris Brown, play the video from the other side, play who from the other side, where they'll not be you know, charged. But here in Sassoda, so we realized it was a mistake if we made it that way. So we just told them, okay, let them just play. Let them play the music because we don't have the copyright right now. And when the copyright comes later in future, these people still have to be put down and talked to. Because yes, otherwise, yes, that yes, would give them really a chance yes. now not to play our music. Yesterday I saw in the news that there is an entertainment uh, authority that's, that, that's trying to work on the issue of, uh, of copyrights or owning of music in the country. I don't know, are you part of that body or like, is it part of the, what the artists want? And even what, on what law, law, law are they based because uh, laws to govern? You know, you, know, uh, you know, Roger, like I would like to say, you know, here, People are just gambling things, you know. People are gambling different ways, to, you know, to put things in, and some of them do these things like, you know, with, with you know, with personal interest, you know, with hopes that like they will gain something from it personally. Like for example, the artist, the South Sudan Artist Union is supposed to be the body that is supposed to be pushing for such. You understand? But then, what have they done in the past 10, 20, uh, 10 12 years since its existence? You know, nothing happened. So unless, because I believe the, I, I believe like the country is working on a, on a new constitution which I, I believe is going to embrace all these things to do with the copyright. And then there we can have it because we tried, but it's very hard because we don't have a specification like in the, in the constitution of Sassadan that talks about the music or the art copyright. So majorly it's just a few individuals who are trying to figure ways out, but several people have tried from the start. And uh, for me personally, I would like to say, I'm not gonna say like I'm not part of it or I'm part of it because one, I've never heard about it and I don't know it, you understand? But if it is there for the benefit, you know, of, uh, of artists in the country, why not, you understand? Why not? I would love to be part of it if it's legit. Because most of these things are just done like based on personal interest, like the artist union is supposed to fight for, you know, for the rights of artists, but you find in so many occasions, they don't do so much for the artists as, you know, it is stated in their constitution constitution of the artist union understand well uh, so i believe for copyright to be effective in our country it has to be well stipulated in the you know constitution of south sudan after this i'm gonna well uh, you go on silver yeah i was like uh, unless uh, this the the, the the copyright the arts copyright has to be very clearly stipulated in the new constitution of the country that's being worked on. Otherwise, when we keep pushing it individually on, on individual interests or powers, it's not going to help because many artists are going to step out of it. You understand? So, well, uh, I yeah, feel yeah, that, that's fine. Be the time when this thing happens. That's fine. And uh, like in other countries, what happens is, uh, of course, the constitution guarantees certain rights, but also you need uh, uh, an act of parliament uh, legislation. Uh, that can can go into detail on the process of the copyright and how you yeah, make yeah. Money out of them. Uh, Abul, uh, I hope you're with us. And uh, what would you say about the issue of uh, SSBC and uh, issue of local and uh, homegrown talent, which the uh, the the law, the Broadcasting Corporation Act, says the SSBC is supposed to be promoting those, uh, uh, providing this space and opportunity for promoting local talents and artistic creativity. 
you, you unmute yourself. You are on mute. All right, great. Um, just to to add on to the um, what Silva was, what you people, I mean, sorry, Silva was discussing about uh, the laws and I think I had, a, I had a talk with with Honorable Nadia about this, you know, and I, it's something that we've discussed about and we still, you know, it's in it's it's in progress. So and I, I'll I'll definitely get back to you. There's how it's going, but the issue of SSBC. <laughs> so personally, I don't have a TV. I don't watch TV. So, but I. I think SSBC has done, I don't know, from the, I've seen them play a lot of Emmanuel Kembe and, and other music. So maybe if, if they're not doing enough, then they should do more. So I, won't make, I, I don't have a, big, a lot of comment about it, but with the artists, I mean, in today's world, there is, um, and South Sudan is catching up as well with internet and all that. I feel like the reason with other countries, the music is doing well is they folk, you know, they, they focus on good videos, and then upload it on internet. So, and and that's it. Like you know, if you make good quality videos and it's uploaded, you're promoting it, then definitely it will reach to a wider audience more than more than it would reach, you know, like on SSBC because if just as the bridge if you're in this two or Terekeka, people don't have TVs. So I feel like the, the best we can focus on is the radios and <laughs> you're laughing. Radios and and the in, you know the internet. I think that the like YouTube and all the other platform would be like a much greater way to reach the audience. Well, uh, we are heading uh, towards the end of the program, and uh, I, can't, I, like I ask... can't hear you. You can you can hear me now, right? Can you? Can you? Sorry, hear me? can you? Yeah, yes, now I can. I can hear you. Yes, uh, I was Who saying. Uh, I, I was yeah. saying uh, we're heading towards the end of the program, and I would like to ask you both: uh, how how best do you think? People who would like to help your art, the two of you, and, and other artists of South Sudan could could help, uh, and also make it make your art reach uh, wider and also have more impact in this, uh, especially this current moment of uh, uh, these efforts to to bring lasting peace in, in South Sudan. Um, you know me. I would like. Uh, I would say. Uh, like okay, me personally, you know, I'm uh, I'm an individual who's who's believe like like I believe in what I do. You understand? I believe in what I do. I believe in what I can do. So I don't rely on on like so much help from outside. I've always fought my ways through. But I think sometimes you know you cannot do some things alone because if we come like I if I can bring an example of Tanzania, you know, the late president of Tanzania before probably he passed on, Mogofuli supported the Tanzanian music a hundred percent. They even go to an extent of paying videos for Diamond. That's how the Tanzanian music rose up to the extent it is, you know, it is right now. It's because the government put a hundred percent effort onto it. Nigerian music is flowing because the government also supports it a hundred percent and the people too have to pick it up. Like for example, Kenyan music during the lockdown, the, uh, the president of Kenya gave about one billion Kenyan shillings to the artists to help them during the lockdown. You understand? And also there are some individuals in the country who are well off, who have enough money. So if they could look, you know, things on the other way around, as in, it's only not, it's not only not because uh, through, uh, through politics that, you know, the country can, you know, can shine. A country can shine through music, through art. Like now my sister was saying, even there are people who call from Germany to buy her art. You know, that's, that's, that's selling the image of South Sudan. And now if we say we invest, somebody who has maybe like who has some money to invest, in some artists who are good, give them good videos, take them somewhere, let them shoot good videos, make them do collaborations, like maybe like with some artists who are very far. It will cost money, yes, 
but the impact will be great. It will raise the name of the, you know, of the country. People will be like, where is this artist from? They'll be like, it's from South Sudan. Where is South Sudan? It's from this side of the country. You know, you understand? So majorly, artists in South Sudan, we are broke. We don't actually have money. Let's be very honest. And no one makes money from music. Not even me, you understand? If you make money from music, it's not much. It's just enough to, you know, to buy food, put food in your car if you have one, and maybe go back to sit and record an audio and be able to shoot the video of 200, 300, or 400 dollars. A few of us can afford to shoot videos of 3,000 dollars. The last time I did that was in 2017 when I shot a video called Moala. That was about 15 million Ugandan shillings. And that was so much, it broke me down into the budget to understand. Because I can do a lot of things with 15 million than to invest in a video that I'm not going to get back, you know? I'm not going to, I'm not going to get the money back out of it. So majorly, if we can invest, more into you know into music into arts and see how we can set it outside you know to to the outside world i guess we would have done a great uh, a great job for our country you know we must always remember music speaks louder than even politics a politician needs you know needs time to gather people to come and sit in the, in the freedom square Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Breaking. Well, uh, Abu so major, I like, think that's, that's how it should be. But then, like, this is all like based on individual efforts. So every artist has to work very hard at your own personal level. So whoever wants to help will come in. You know, will come in and help you when already you're doing something for yourself. Because right now we cannot put everything on the government. The government still has a lot of things to do, a lot of things to fix. You know, we need schools, we need roads, we need hospitals. We need clean water, we need food, we need security. So we cannot put a lot of you know, burden on the government when they already have too much to fix. So I think you know, private sectors can, you know, can invest into music and we see how we can sell that out. Well, uh, thank you for that. Uh, Abul, uh, you can come in uh, to give us your final thoughts on that question. Uh, unmute yourself and uh, your camera. You are on mute, yes. Yes, go on, Abul. You are, you're still on mute. Can you unmute yourself? Yes. Great. Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, I was asking uh, how best uh, you could be help in, in the projects you have at the moment uh, to make an impact also uh, wider. So people who are listening, who are watching this program, people who could help you, what would be your message to them in terms of making your work reach uh, wider? Well, how best can they help me? Well, um, so like I said earlier, we are um, we're building a foundation, we're building a, a gallery and um, I've been knocking on people's doors, you know, business people, NGOs, all this. And um, so um, the groundbreaking is soon. Uh, I'm hoping for next month. And uh, I'd like people to come through, like, you know, because whatever it is that it needs to build a gallery. So far, we, we have already got donations from the, the, the UN. We're going to use shipping containers to build space and and i'm hoping more people can come in they can yes can you so yeah i'm hoping for more people to come in and see how you know in whichever way you know it, it can be they can come and maybe build uh, the foundation or build. so it's a big project that is going to take sometimes and yeah I've, I'll be glad for anybody to come through and help us create this space that we've, we, we don't have in the country. And I mean, having the first museum ever in South Sudan, I think that would be amazing. Well, uh, finally, to both of you in just a few seconds, where, could, uh, where, can, where, where can the people find your work? How, how can people find your work? Websites or where, just very quick. Um, well, for me, it's uh, you're the Baba Foundation, and then my web, I have webs, different website for my artwork, Abul Oyai, aboloyai.com. And 
the Bob of House. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, everyone in Juba, the Bob of House. Silva, you should come and perform here. I should put for yeah, you a show. Definitely. definitely. I'll be very much glad to do that. And I hope it's going to be Please, live. So let's get in touch. Yeah. Sure. Let's, and, uh, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, like uh, you can get my music. Okay, my music is everywhere, like on the social. You know, if you're if you're outside, you can get my music from YouTube. That is Silver X. Uh, if you want to catch me up on social media, on Instagram, it's also Silver X. Uh, our Facebook page is also Silver X. Twitter, the same Silver X. And uh, if you also can search, you know, in all the you know in all the music, uh, the world music stores like you know iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, Tidal, whatever you know. Social, I mean, a uh, digital music platform. You can always access just such silver X Sedan. You can always get my music in there. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and let's see how we can, you know we can catch up. So that's the little platform I have for now. And like, yeah, website I have silver X, I think dot net something, but I'm not so much using it at the moment. But yeah, that's all we have for now. Well, uh, with and also, like, even the ground, definitely on the radios and the TVs, you can always access it, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, with that, our dear viewer, we have come to the end of the program, the weekly review, uh, making sense of relevant topics and news. Today, we were looking at the impact of South Sudanese artists, the opportunities that are available for them to bring positive change to challenges uh, the artists face and how to improve the environment and work of artists. We had uh, Silver X and uh, Abul Oyai. Thank you very much, the two of you, for being on the program. Blessings. Thank you, God Roger. Bless you, bro.